It's Sunday, May 22nd, 2011, just for a few minutes more. I just got back into town from visiting with some family, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. <laughs> Apologies for the delays and for this being kind of a short video. It is very late at night and I do have to get up early tomorrow, so I'm going to have to split it into two videos. Today we're going to do the Linux news, tomorrow we'll do the Android news, if that's okay with you guys. But let's go ahead and get started with some distro release and update news. This week, Magia 1 put out their release candidate. That means that at the beginning of June, we should see the final product for Magia. Hopefully once those release, I will have time to look at both Magia and Mandriva. Red Hat released version 6.1 of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Fusion Linux 14.1's release candidate became available this week. If you're not familiar with Fusion Linux, it's basically Fedora with a bunch of changes done to it out of the box. Kongoni GNU Linux version 2011's release candidate came out this week as well. Kongoni Linux is a Slackware-based distribution with KDE on top of it, and it is free software foundation compliant. And the final distro release that I saw fit to mention this week is Migo version 1.2 is now available. A few months ago we talked about how Nokia was abandoning Migo in favor of Microsoft's Windows Phone 7. However, Intel has chosen to continue the project. They've actually got the Migo conference going on in San Francisco over the next few days, so I will probably be putting out some more information as I learn more. But that's enough as far as distro release news goes, let's go ahead and move on to general Linux type news. If you missed it, last week marked the release of Adobe's Flash Player version 10.3. That also came with a 32-bit Linux version. However, the 64-bit version had not updated and still has not. But Pharonix.com has reported this week that version 10.4 that will be coming sometime in the near future should see a sync in the code base between 32 and 64-bit, so we should be receiving the same updates at the same time. Huge thumbs up there. However, Square has been working very, very nicely. So if you've not tried out 64-bit and the 64-bit Square pre-release, go ahead and give that a try. I've been using it on my desktop and my laptop for a very long time now, and it does work nicely. And of course, it wouldn't be a Linux news update if we didn't mention the new kernel that was released this week. Kernel version 2.6.39 officially became available this week. From what I've read, the biggest change with 2.6.39 is the implementation of IPset, which basically makes it a lot easier to set up dynamic firewalls and block out certain people you don't want accessing your systems. There are also a lot of new updated drivers, EXT4 performance has been improved, kernel virtualization has been made a little bit better, but at the same time, Pharonix.com is reporting that they're seeing a lot of reports on the mailing lists that there are some problems with the Intel Sandy Bridge graphics drivers. So if you have one of the newer systems with the Intel Sandy Bridge processor and you're looking to upgrade, you might want to hold off just a little while to see if they put out a patch or if it's fixed in a slightly updated version of 2639. In some decently big news, and an interesting bit of news in my opinion, there was some talk on one of the GNOME mailing lists this week about the possibility of GNOME becoming a Linux-only project. Up to this point, GNOME has been available for Linux, for BSD, for Solaris, and there also is a component that will work on Windows, the GTK Plus platform. Some of the developers on the mailing list are proposing that SystemD be added as an external dependency for GNOME, which SystemD is only designed for Linux and only runs on Linux currently, so that would basically push Solaris and BSD-based systems out of GNOME and out of working with the latest, greatest versions. Now keep in mind this is just talk, this is just developers discussing possibilities. They're actually talking about the possibility of making GNOME into a full-fledged operating system. Again, this is completely conjecture, there's nothing really set in stone as far as that's concerned, there are just people talking talking about it for now. But if you are not just a Linux user, if you're a Solaris or a BSD user, what do you think about the idea of GNOME moving to a Linux-only backend? Would that move you toward another desktop environment? If they did, obviously it would. But what sort of opinion do you have on this? Do you think it should be left up to the BSD and the Solaris people to make it work with their systems or to port SystemD over to it? Or do you think that GNOME should continue focusing their efforts on such a broad base and avoiding the newest, latest, greatest technologies? But that's enough about that. Moving on to other GNOME-related topics. This week, VirtualBox version 4.0.8 came out, adding support for GNOME 3, GNOME Shell, in VirtualBox for Fedora 15 and Ubuntu 11.04. Where I've been out of town, I have not had a chance to check Fedora 15 in the VirtualBox to see how GNOME Shell works with it, but I will be doing that in the coming days. Keeping things rolling, one little bit of Ubuntu-related news. This week, the Ubuntu Studio people announced that they're moving away from Unity and GNOME Shell, moving away from the defaults that come with Ubuntu and some other distros. They're actually moving the entire Ubuntu Studio project over to XFCE. 
The way that they put it, Unity and Gnome Shell do not fit with their current target audience's workflow. They're going to be setting up a custom UI based around XFCE with Avant Window Navigator at the bottom. So if you are an Ubuntu Studio user, you don't have to worry so much about using Unity or Gnome Shell if you don't like either of those things. Personally, I haven't had a chance to try out Ubuntu Studio in a couple of years, so I'm kind of curious to see where they go with it. And the last thing I'd like to talk about today, like I said, I'm leaving the Android stuff out until tomorrow just for time's sake. Zero AD, a game that I've been talking to you guys about for quite a little while now, released their Alpha 5 this week. With this new version, they've improved gameplay, they've improved the AI, they've added a new civilization that you can play as, they've improved the graphics, the GUI, the art, basically every component of the game has been improved, made a lot better, so I'm going to be trying it out as soon as I can. Hopefully I'll be able to do a video about it. I might have to talk to developers about that though. But that's about all I've got for you today. Time is running extremely short, like I said. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great weekend. My weekend was actually pretty good, thanks for asking. But again, that's all for now. I will see you next time. Thank you.